late 20s and early 30s, a new type of airplane emerged from technology created at Langley. Wood and fabric were replaced by metal. The double wing gave way to a single internally braced wing. Engines were lighter, more powerful, covered by a cowling, and moved forward on the wing. The Douglas DC-3 transport epitomized the designed revolution of the 30s. Large enough for 21 passengers, it was durable, stable, and fast enough to be profitable. As the airplane changed, Langley changed with it by adding new facilities. The full-scale tunnel, the towing tank, spin tunnels. Langley began its studies of vertical flight with helicopters and autogyros, and researchers like John Stack and Eastman Jacobs were beginning to investigate phenomena near the speed of sound. Langley's can-do reputation exacted a price. As NACA attracted more attention, it began to lose key people to the booming industry it had helped create. A lot of, of young employees did leave Langley in the 20s and 30s, but where did they go? A lot of them, of course, who left Langley went to jobs in industry. Essentially what they were doing was they were taking the Langley know-how, the experience of, of systematic testing, and and that technology, in a sense, was being transferred over to the American aircraft industry. In response to the growth of the industry, NACA created new labs, Ames, Lewis, Dryden. Langley provided talent and leadership to each. Helping to maintain a reputation for excellence were Langley's cadre of model makers, wind tunnel technicians, and the so-called human computers. The technical staff was really the secret weapon we had at Langley. We were completely self-sufficient. We could design the wind tunnel at Langley. If need be, we could build the, the components that were difficult to manufacture. The work was all done within house. By the mid-1930s, the wind tunnels of Langley had helped transform wire and rag biplanes into sleek all-metal monoplanes. By 1940, a new war would provide the impetus for the airplane's next evolutionary leap. War meant that Langley made the improvement of military aircraft the first priority. The Germans and Japanese threatened to dominate the skies. Allied airplanes had to be equally agile and fast. One way to accomplish this was to streamline the surface of the aircraft as much as possible to reduce drag or resistance to airflow. Less drag meant more speed, better fuel economy, and an extra edge for survival in the air. The wartime business of the Langley Lab would be drag cleanup, as it was called, for a substantial portion of the American fleet. 